Sex, death, love, secrets and betrayal are the cornerstones of, well, my weekends, and also great TV drama. They are also invariably the pillars on which the greatest, or at least the most memorable moments are built, and it makes sense they would continue to be the most valuable currency in TV writing. Betrayal especially has a big place in our favourite small screen dramas, because the emotional exchange in a character not merely being hurt, but being hurt by someone they considered a friend or closer is even more poignant, even more pained, and even more relatable than anything else. I mean, we have all had that moment when we've opened the fridge and seen our housemate has eaten the leftover pizza from the night before, after all. God damn you, John. Whilst there is a searing shock factor attached to the very best betrayals, there is also something deliciously Moorish, deliciously pizza-ish about watching the good guys go bad when it is not you suffering the burn, which is why we continue to go back for more time and time again. Or at the very least, to see what revenge our favourite characters manage to get in the end, eh? I am the heavily booby-trapped fridge owner of Ash from What Culture, and these are the 10 most shocking betrayals in TV history. 10. Stahl Kills Her Girlfriend, Sons of Anarchy Sons of Anarchy has some seriously explosive moments. For example, Gemma's murder of Tara could have easily qualified here instead, if it wasn't for the fact it was actually in response to a wrongly assumed act of betrayal in the first place. So, Gemma is off the hook, just about, even though she was a despicable monster all the same. No, the real worst betrayal in Sons of Anarchy comes in the third season, when Agent Stahl proved just how far she'd be willing to go to climb the ladder at the ATF. Having been demoted and removed from the IRA case in the wake of a murder of Edmund Hayes and framing of Gemma, she needed a scapegoat for Hayes' murder, and settled on her own girlfriend, Agent Amy Tyler. The pair were lovers, they lived together, and Stahl turned all of that on its head for the sake of protecting herself and her career. Have no doubt that she genuinely loved Tyler, just her love simply was not as strong as her goddamn evilness. 9. They Weren't On A Break Friends Ross Geller is trash now. The world has decided. Ask anyone. He might be the character in Friends who grows the most because Chandler learning not to be a commitment-phobic man-baby isn't that much of a revelation, but he's also the easiest one to criticise in hindsight, because Ross's comedy value is rooted partly in the fact that he is not that much of a nice guy. All of the characters have flaws, but Ross has a PhD in shitty behaviour. He dates one of his own students, he is awful about Joey being in love with Rachel, he's sexist at times about his son and the very concept of male nannies, and then attempting to gaslight her to absolve himself of blame. Ross might claim that he and Rachel were on a break until he is blue in the face, but going out dancing and sleeping with someone else after an argument of your own creation and then trying to cover it up is a serious betrayal, and if it wasn't, he wouldn't have tried to cover it up as rapidly as he did. 8. Grant Ward is a Hydra agent, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had a pretty big issue with people not being who anyone thought they would be, but this is exactly right considering how rotten S.H.I.E.L.D. is as an organisation. Even with Agent Coulson installed to look after the operation, the hangover from the nefarious organisation's infiltration was felt for a fair old while. The worst of the betrayals linked to that came in the form of Grant Ward, the lantern-jawed, apparently morally unambiguous hero who was as straight as he was, well, dull, really. Only he wasn't really any of that, because one of the show's best twists revealed that Ward was in fact a double agent working for Hydra. The twist comes after the revelation that Agent Garrett is also a Hydra agent, and Ward reveals his secret in order to break his boss out. That he then goes and shoots Hand and two other agents is an incredibly shocking moment. 7. Jay Garrick is Zoom, The Flash The Flash has a bit of a thing for being tricksy about identity, with the true nature of the show's villains being a major selling point for drama more than once. Whilst the biggest betrayal linked to that sort of thing could have been the reveal that Dr. Harrison Wells was actually the reverse Flash, it's Jay Garrick's revelation that is more smartly written, and thus a little more effective. When Jay Garrick was introduced in the second season, the Flash fans were gifted a classic character from the comics who had been a forerunner as The Flash. At the same time, we were also gifted New Big Bad Zoom, a terrifying figure who dialed up the threat to Barry more than anyone before him. He proved his mettle by murdering Jay. Only, he didn't actually, because Zoom was Jay, or he was serial killer Hunter Zolomon posing as Jay, and went on to kill Barry's father to rub salt into the already gaping emotional wounds. 6. 
Vic sells out Ronnie, The Shield. When your team is as riddled with corruption and bonded by lies and violence as The Shield's experimental LA strike team, you just know things can only hold together for so long before something starts to break. That much was clear when Shane murdered Lem, but we could have spotted that one coming a mile off. We were, in fact, supposed to. Vic and Ronnie, on the other hand, seemed solid. They were best friends, and Ronnie was the most level-headed of the crew, though nobody should confuse that with him being a good man by any means. They were all monsters, and them getting their due was always likely. It was just the matter of it that stung. Having always been Vic's rock, Ronnie saw his loyalty repaid by his best friend's betrayal as he was thrown to the wolves. And it was only as he was hauled off by cops that he realized the true monster that Vic really was. 5. The Red Wedding – Game of Thrones Quite honestly, you could fill several lists with characters betraying each other in Game of Thrones. Such was the nature of the show that for a long time, the great game favored those who sought victory at any cost, even if you were related to power or politically allied at the time. The finest example of the game in action, and also the cost of any character foolishly seeking true love over alliances made solely for power, which was how you play the game after all, came in the reigns of Castamere. Not merely one of the biggest shocks of the whole bloody show, the Red Wedding was one of the most painful to view. The Boltons and Frey set about staging the betrayal of the Starks with such theatricality that the ultimate moment, the sound of the Lannisters' theme music and Roose Bolton's message of regards, felt like the audience were being as betrayed as much as Rob himself. 4. Wesley Steals Connor – Angel up until the third season of Angel, Wesley had often been a comedic figure used for levity. But then Angel got someone pregnant, you know, despite the whole dead thing, and everything changed for Wesley. He became a lot more serious, but crucially, he also became a lot more interesting. And it also led to him making the fairly disastrous decision to betray Angel. Angel's son Connor obviously brings some joy for his father and the rest of the gang, who all dote on the miracle child. And then Wesley discovers a fake prophecy changed by a time-shifting demon stating that Angel will kill his son, which disturbs Wesley so much that he keeps it to himself and decides to kidnap Connor. That almost leads to his death, but worse, it condemns Connor to a hell dimension, which understandably upsets Angel. Regardless of Wesley's intent or the good behind his actions, it is a betrayal that leads not only to Angel losing his son, but to Connor growing up in a harsh reality that asks him to fight for his life repeatedly, as his kidnapper indoctrinated him against vampires and Angel. Nice one, Wesley! 3. Michael Kills His Own – Lost Michael Dawson has to go through a lot during his time as an active character on Lost. He not only survives the trauma of a plane crash, but then sees his beloved son Walter kidnapped and removed from the island by the others. When he thinks he's getting computer messages from Walt pointing him to his location, Michael follows the directions, only to be kidnapped himself by the group and told to free their leader Ben and bring them Sawyer, Hurley, Kate and Jack. Unfortunately, freeing Ben isn't all that simple, and Michael is forced to tell Anna Lucia, who is guarding Ben, that he will kill her captive on her behalf, but then kills her when she hands him over the gun. As if that betrayal isn't shocking enough, he then kills Libby when she walks in on them, before taking the survivors to the others. He may be driven by love and his desperation, but Michael's murder of two of his own and betrayal of four others is hugely shocking. Still, we probably didn't deserve to be cursed to eternal captivity on the island, though, really. 2. Nina Myers, 24 Espionage shows have a higher-than-normal chance of featuring some big-time double-crossing. It's in their genes. But 24 was on a whole other level, taking Jack Bauer's closest and most trusted ally and former lover and revealing her to be a mole. Nina was so completely trusted and unquestionably solid that the turn was inconceivable and devastatingly effective. Towards the end of the first season, we learn that Nina is the second mole at the CTU, having killed fellow rat Jamie Farrell and staged her suicide. In a moment, the known truth that Nina was always going to be there for Jack was flipped irretrievably on its axis, and to make matters worse, she killed his wife after being told to tie up any loose ends. She was far from the only mole, to the point they have to wonder about the CTU's recruitment process, really, but hers was by far the most devastating betrayal. 1. Ollie Game of Thrones 
Nobody in their right mind will sit and tell you that young Ollie didn't go through some seriously bad things in his short life. After the free folk attack, his parents are killed, his father by Ygret, and then as far as he knows, eaten by Stir and his people. He then joins the Night's Watch, a miserable existence, and becomes Jon Snow's personal steward, which allows him to kill Ygret eventually and avenge his father. That would be enough death in anyone's life. But then Ollie goes too far, joining the mutiny led by Alistair Thorne against Snow and leading Jon to his death by deceiving him into believing a wildling has information on Benjen's whereabouts. And as if that part in the deception isn't enough, it is Ollie who delivers the killing blow to his master through his heart as he begs him for mercy. Honestly, that kid. And that's our list. What TV betrayal had you clutching at your pearls? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back every day for more lovely content. Thanks for watching.